Hey, it's Adam with Tech Dive AV Club. We're in Vegas Effects. We're going to talk about the different blend modes Vegas Effects offers and how to expect them to work when you're using them. So with Vegas Effects, you can get to different blend modes right here if you right click on any item in the track and then hit blend. Uh, with the normal blend mode, this is like a source alpha blend, uh, you just see what's on top. Like it's a piece of paper, uh, and the piece of paper on top is what you see. So if something's smaller or if something's transparent or see-through, you're just going to see uh, the edges of that. So like if there's a PNG of an arrow, you're just going to see the outline of the arrow, I mean the arrow over top of the clip above it. And so that one just chooses the clip on top. So if I if I take this track and move it down, then you see this beautiful vista right here but if I move this back up on top then now this is the one on top and and this is also the basis of masking and we're going to try another blend mode so when you right click and hit blend again and we go to add add actually adds all the pixel values together so here let's talk about pixels so first off uh, white alright so now we're going to blend these two together so first off white has a color value of one, right? It's all the colors together. While black, this little strip right here is a perfect black, black has the color value of zero because it's none of the colors. While you might be familiar with the color space, We well, might be familiar with the color space where colors have some sort of value in between 0 and 1 and those values can be like their RGB value of like 255, 254, 11 or whatever. You can pick blues and greens. Whatever that color value is, that's going to, in whatever color space you're using, you're going to be uh, combining them in some way. So we're going to change the rules on how to combine these layers. We're not going to do it with the standard method anymore. So if we right click and hit blend and we change the rules, we can change it to add. So add Add says let's add up both color values and display that but let's not go any higher or lower than one or zero so then one is white so one plus anything else is just still one so white stays white while black zero plus any other color value is transparent because zero plus any other color value is just what the color value was so you can see how black and the close to black gradients are pretty much transparent or transparent. Meanwhile, the colors are deeply affected. It brightens up everything and it brightens it up towards the color that it's added to. So if we go to blend options and color, what that does, it only blends the color. So you can see that when there's no color, like white or black, it just makes it black and white, but it gives the color to the image that uh, is over top of it. So this now takes on a green and this takes on a blue or, oh, sorry, blue and this takes on a cyan. Now when you right click and go to blend options you can go to color burn. So it adds both layers together and it subtracts one from the sum. So uh, you get a darker version of the com combination there. So that means that you get black turns black because uh, zero plus the other thing minus one you're gonna get something darker than black which is black and then white you get one plus the original color value minus one is just the original color value, so white becomes transparent. So white's transparent, black isn't, and the other colors are a darker coloring. Dodge, color dodge, is when it divides the bottom layer and by the inverted top layer. So when you invert something, the white becomes black and the black becomes white. It shows the opposite color. So instead of a negative, uh, you re which it can be called a negative, like a negative photo, uh, you when you invert something you get the opposite effects so uh, where on a color wheel like uh, the opposite of green is is this mid purple right so purple becomes green and green becomes purple uh, or blues become yellows things like that so that is what a negative is or an opposite and whites become black blacks become white so a negative photo is just an inverted photo so it does this in order so you don't actually see the inversion but what it does is it inverts it and then it divides the bottom layer by the inverted top layer. So it takes this bottom layer, it divides it the values by the values of the corresponding pixels of an inverted top layer. <laughs> this lightens the bottom layer depending on the value of the top layer. 
the bright the brighter the top layer the more color it affects the bottom layer so uh, see the dark values don't really affect it very much but white stays white and it brightens all the colors again so that is a color dodge it brightens everything based off uh, the inverted value so it has a different way of brightening darken makes all the pixels darker based off the value of the pixel above it. So it merges the colors and then makes them darker, uh, but that also makes white essentially transparent. The difference blend mode now is the difference with difference is it's subtract, but instead of capping it off at zero or one, where zero is white, you know, black, sorry, where zero is black and one is white, instead, if it achieves a negative number, it gives the opposite value like it's supposed to. So uh, it gives the inversion. So difference is subtraction, but it allows for inversion. So you actually get uh, inverted, a perfect inverted image with the white here. See? And you get some inversions in other places, depending on if the color value gets uh, past one or not. While uh, black can become see-through. A difference can have very big results uh, when the difference is high, but if the difference is low, like with black and zero minus anything still zero, you're not gonna have any difference. With dissolve, if you change the opacity of it, so you can always change the opacity with any of these layers, and that's just how much you can see through it. Dissolve actually changes how this works. So if you dissolve, the opacity instead of it just becoming more and more transparent more and more see-through like a normal blend layer so let me go ahead and grab this and put it normal again so see how this is a normal opacity change just like a fade really that's all it is it is slowly making it more and more transparent until suddenly it's the only thing you can see if you change that to dissolve then when you change the opacity it has clusters of pixels which become more and more transparent and clusters of pixels which are eliminated. So it's as if uh, it is being broken up or dissolved by acid or something like that as the, as the pixels are broken up in clusters instead of broken up uh, or instead of becoming more and more see-through. Divide divides the pixel values from one layer with the other and it will brighten the photo uh, unless it's a gray. So you can see that the one that doesn't have much change is the neutral gray. Now it still is changing it, but it doesn't change it much because of that neutral gray. White, however, doesn't have any change. There's no change in a white. Uh, black will really, really brighten it by default. And a lot of times you can use this because it'll, it, because it returns colors divided by itself, uh, will return to one. They'll return to white. So if you have a color that is color casting over the whole image you can offset the whole image by dividing it by the color cast and it pushes that color cast to a white which is effectively a white balance exclusion is used to line up images so if we make this see-through for a second and we take this bottom one and we duplicate it and then we add exclusion see with the exclusion it does fancy stuff to show you the differences in the pixels uh, so when you have the same one when they're the same it like snaps together it has this effect so just see how it just kind of goes snap has this effect that really helps you line up to pixel perfect precision uh, two different images. So that's what you would use ex exclusion for. So we're going to jump down to multiply mask. What multiply mask says is it multiplies the pixel values together. So zero times anything is zero, so black stays black. And one times anything is the same number, so white becomes transparent. So white becomes transparent. Black stays black is a way of maintaining outlines. If you have an illustration or something, you want to get rid of the colors out, but keep the outlines is a great way to do that. Uh, and it also multiplies the colors, but it tends to darken the image overall. Similar to that, screen is the same thing, but because it in inverts it, then multiplies it, then uninverts it, it actually brightens the whole image. So the whole image uh, has the same effect, uh, <clears throat> has the opposite effect actually, where white is now not see-through, black is transparent, and uh, the other colors brighten everything instead. So it's the opposite of multiply, mask, and 
Um, screen is the opposite of multiply mask, essentially. But if you overlay, what overlay does is it actually takes the best of screen and multiply mask and it, it picks on whether or not it's really bright or really dark, which one to do. So you kind of get both effects at once where uh, dark colors darken things, but bright colors brighten things and white sees how white it brightens everything while darks darken everything so the brights become brighter the darks become darker all based off the pixel values of the top image so what if you wanted to base it off the pixel values of the top images over the what if you wanted to base it off the pixel value of the bottom image? Well, you could flop it, or you could just use hard light, because hard light does the same thing. It bases it off the pixel values of the bottom image. I can prove that because I can just go to normal, flop these, and then go back to overlay, and it's going to look just like hard light. Or I can go to um, hard light, and it's going to look just like overlay did. So if we swap these back... See, we, we can achieve the same effect. It just picks, it just picks the bottom or the top layer to uh, start. It just picks the bottom or the top layer uh, for its brightness values to compare, uh, to be the main comparison for the brightness values. Different than hard light, soft light actually uh, has a similar effect, but the math is very different. So don't worry about the math. But soft light bright has, a, has the same kind of effect as hard light does. Uh, with very different math behind it, but it kind of achieves a similar effect, but in a lot softer of a way. So if you look at a hard light, and then you look at soft light, you can see what I'm talking about there. Uh, with neutral grays really not changing anything much at all. So now, talk about hue. Hue only changes the hue, the color of the image above it. It doesn't change anything else, brightness or anything else. It just tries to change the color based off the hue of the top image. And so now we have the bottom image informing the brightness, informing the, you know, the sh the coloring and uh, the shapes. Uh, but everything else, the color of all that is influenced by the top image. So white doesn't really change anything and black doesn't really change anything because both of those don't have a color or a hue to uh, influence the bottom image. Look at lighten. So if a color is brighter, it'll composite uh, like white covers it completely while these all composite and black is see-through. So you keep your white black is see-through and everything else composites to a point where the darker colors don't really composite that much, if at all. Luminosity, see how the colors disappear and white stays? Luminosity uh, takes the luminosity of the top layer and applies it to the bottom layer. So the bottom layer, now its brightness is all changed by the top layer, which makes it look real odd. Uh, but it's bottom see everything's all blocky you can still see the blocks but it doesn't take any color or reference from it so the black stays black the white stays white and everything else just is informed its luminosity is the only thing informed by the top layer when we go to saturation now the saturation is the only thing informed by the top layer so with a neutral gray and with white and with black there is no uh, saturation change so uh Blacks stay black, white say, black stays black and white, white stays black and white, but the saturation, because it removes all the saturation. But these all have a very high saturation in the colors, so it just kind of bumps up that saturation based off the saturation above it. That's why there's no color change right here. You can just see a kind of a block. You can see some of the little lines in the original image, but uh, all these are just a super saturated version of the image below it because it just informs the saturation based off the the picture above it so the high saturation now transfers to the picture below blowing out the saturation in a lot of the in a lot of the image now a subtract subtract just subtracts the pixel values from each other unlike difference though it will not show you the negatives if one minus anything uh, is going to be black because because whatever the color was underneath it after it subtracted to one you're going to get black because there's zero. There's the only thing left. We're going to keep in whole numbers with subtract. We're not going to have any negatives. 
unlike difference. With difference, you see the negative value, so you will get a negative where there was a white. Uh, but with but with this, you know, zero, the black panel right here has no change because zero, can, you know, subtracting zero from something doesn't change anything. Subtract, it darkens the whole image, very different than add, because uh, remember with add, everything gets way brighter, uh, except for the blacks don't really change much. So those are your different blend options with Vegas Effect. You can use these to great effect uh, with a lot of different reasons and variations in mind. So what I was showing you today, you can see the math and kind of some of the thought process behind these blend modes. But there's really a lot, a lot of nifty uses for these. I'm going to have a video in particular that talks about nifty uses for blend modes between the different softwares and what they're used for and how, how and why they're different use cases for these blending modes can happen. Uh, so subscribe if you're looking for that video, like if this video helped you out, and more Vegas Effect videos are on the way. So thanks for watching. Anything you buy through my affiliates links helps me out a ton. I will see you next time.